Um, we're going to go to our, our next uh, guitarist of note, who is João Pernambuco, otherwise known as João Teixeira Guimarães, uh, 1883 to 1947. He was born in Rio, okay, but he spent a, a lot of his early years in Recife in Pernambuco, like thus the, the name João Pernambuco. Very often artists are named by the region that they're from uh, when they have some kind of reputation. And he <clears throat> was, he wrote a huge body of, of, of solo guitar pieces. Uh, also what's really important to note is that 1919 to 1922, he became part of Pichinguinha's uh, Os Oito Batutas, which was like the group that toured Europe in 1919 where Pichinguinha, among other musicians, met Louis Armstrong, Sidney Bechet, et cetera, et cetera. Um, so, João Pernambuco is a very important figure. Um, this is in Tehagandu. Uh, it's a Shoro Mashishi, and uh, uh, this is him actually playing, but he has accompaniment. So, Reducing, and, and you'll find this is, is the case with Dilamado Hayes, who actually multi-tracks himself. It's hard sometimes to have a distilled score of, uh, of, of uh, this. Uh, by the way, this is a picture of, of Cañoto with his guitar. You can see, see the E string, at, the low E string at the bottom, like, so you can see that he is playing it upside down. Um, and then there's Dio Lomando, who we'll get to in a second. Love your shirt, baby. Um, so this is in Tehagandu by João Pernambuco, and it's a Shoro Mashishi, and this is extremely uh, characteristic of, of this period. <laughs> So the, 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 there's a lot, of, lot to talk about in this piece. Obviously, you can you can hear that mashishi rhythm underneath. It's very, it's very prominent. The thing about this is that different players will play the the theme different ways. I mean, I've kind of reduced this, you know, to. What, what can happen, and what does very often happen, is that if you have a voicing, you can break it up and, and turn it into an arpeggio, right? right. And, and this, this goes to a very important point, which we'll see strikingly clear in Baden-Powell's playing, which is when you are the composer and you're the guitarist and over the course of a 50 or 60 year career you're playing your own music, even if it's been printed and published a couple of times, 20 years later there's all kinds of new stuff in there. So it's not like you have a piece of Chopin and people are interpreting the ink. It's like the ink is moving. <laughs> and that's the thing about Brazilian guitar, Brazilian guitarist composers. And when you hear Sebastião Tapajós also, you'll, you'll, you'll notice that the different recordings of both the same tune, he is constantly developing his own repertoire. So it's living. Just because it's printed on, on, on a page of music does not mean that that's the end of the adventure of this composition. 
And so the improvisatory nature, the phrase, the rephrasing, the, the introduction of new, completely new thematic sections and transitions, all of this stuff is what makes, you know, Brazilian contemporary guitar fascinating. Those players who were more conservatory trained pretty much tended to keep things a certain way and play it that way all the time. But the Shoro guys who were used to interpreting and used to embellishing their melodies in various ways, not just melodically but texturally in terms of the accompaniment and bass lines, use of lots of inversions, which is key to Shoro, lots of harmonic inversions. So, in any event, just to point out that, that you know, the variations that are possible for a given thematic area, when you decide you want to do your version of a, of a piece, it's very open, and you can still remain stylistically appropriate and, and have textural freedom to manipulate the elements as you, as you hear them. Right. And the more that you listen to other people doing it, it's like, okay. Now, this is Sonia Gimaggio, and this is a beautiful waltz of Jean Pernambuco, and this is from the historical duo recording, 1991, of Rafael Abelu and Gino Secchi Cordes, who arguably, he, he was not the first to play the set of string, but he was the first to really consecrate it as an instrumental tradition. So, uh, and, we're, and I just have to point out that it's just over a month that 20 years ago, Rafael uh, passed away at the age of 32. And uh, it's tough. It's tough. And, and when you hear him and you think of what he would be doing now, it's just extraordinary. So this was... There's a huge story be, uh, between these two guys, which we'll get to later, which is essentially Haf Gino was Rafael's idol. He would sneak under tables at clubs as a little kid to hear him. He, would be, he asked him for lessons for, for years and years and years, and Gino would never give him lessons. So the fact that they finally did a recording together is it's historic. It's amazing. But I want you to hear... Joan Pernambuco's version first, so that you can hear, get a frame of reference. This is Sonia Gimaggio. Oops, hang on a second. Okay. Again, an introduction. And again, it's two guys front. Here we go. their version okay and you can hear it's a waltz and it's very fluid <laughs> and you know the ralentando there is uh, to, to put it mildly a ralentando <laughs> um, now this is Rafael and Gino and, th and this is an exact transcription of the first eight bars but you'll hear the simpatico and just the, the, the bond that these two players have it's just it's so symbiotic it's, it's extraordinary
long sea and such a goddess. spent three hours just talking about this one track mm -hmm. but yeah but the rubato is so tasteful by comparison they're oh so, yeah yeah they're so polite yeah yeah uh, the thing to point out is that the sechi cordis not only has harmonic function both in terms of bass line choices there are some small voicings here and there if, if the other guy's playing the melody there's some small voicings but they're not that prominent what's prominent is you know, the thumb pick. And Gino's playing his seven string uh, with flat wound. He used to use a low cello C string and then use diamond flat wound, which are made in Germany, and then nylon trebles on the B and E. And I played his guitar in 1998 and it's built like a truck. <laughs> 